In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use some event bindings other than the default uh, click event, which you may be used to using in Ionic 2 applications. So I've got a little application set up here now with a, just with a button, uh, with an event binding that runs a function when clicked. So if I click this, it says we did it. Uh, we'll just quickly take a look at the code for that. Uh, we have the template here. Uh, we have the click uh, event set up here and that's going to trigger the do something function in the homepage class here. And all it's doing is logging out that statement. Now for the most part, this is all you'll really ever have to use for most of the time. Uh, use a click event on your buttons uh, to launch a page or do whatever. Uh, most of the time you just need a simple click event uh, for mobile applications because uh, you'll just have the user tapping on the screen in various parts of the application to trigger uh, certain events. But uh, there are other events we can use as well. Uh, there are some inbuilt uh, gestures that we can make use of, uh, the typical sort of gestures that you might use on a mobile application aside from simple taps uh, like pressing and swiping and those kinds of things. And the way we can use those is actually really easy. All you have to do is replace this click with whatever, or whatever event you want to use. Uh, so we have uh, tap press, pan, swipe, rotate, uh, pinch. Uh, we can make use of all of those. So I'm just going to show you a few uh, right now that I can uh, actually show you on the computer. Obviously, I can't do things like um, pinching. Uh, but if I change this to, uh, let's go with uh, press instead, save that and jump back in here. Uh, so if I click this now, uh, if I just click it quickly, nothing happens. Uh, but if I click and hold for just a second, uh, the we did it logs out again uh, because that's how the um, uh, the press gesture works. Uh, we could use a pan, uh, which is uh, kind of like a, a dragging uh, gesture, uh, perhaps in the way you'd sort of pan a, a picture left to right or something like that. Uh, it's a bit silly to put a pan event on a button, but we can do it if we want to. Uh, so if I try that now, you can see as I sort of drag to the left there, I'm getting a whole bunch of um, uh, console statements being logged out. And same if I drag back to the right again. And I can even go up and down as well. And I'll just use one more example. We'll try the, the swipe gesture. Uh, save that again. And now to trigger that uh, event, I'm going to have to do a quick little swipe uh, to the right or to the left. And you can see it. Uh, logging out there. Uh, but if I did this sort of slow pan uh, as I just did before, it doesn't do anything. Uh, so those are some common things you'll probably want to use in a mobile application, but uh, they aren't the only events we can use. Uh, I've also got uh, a DOM events Wikipedia page uh, up here. And so we can essentially, we can hook into any kind of DOM event. Uh, we have the HTML events here. Uh, there's a few examples here of things we can use. Uh, so we can use these, any of these sort of native events that are available uh, through uh, the DOM. We can listen to them in our uh, event bindings. Now, some things aren't going to be relevant to our button, of course. We're not going to, uh, uh, we're probably not going to listen to, say, a load event on a button. You might use the load event to listen for when an image loads. Uh, but we can do, we can use some of these on the button as well. We can even use something like, say, key down. If I was to change this to key down, and again, this is a pretty silly example because you're probably not going to want to use this on a button, uh, but we can. So if I jump back into the app again now, and if I uh, first have to focus, uh, give focus to that button by clicking on it, uh, but if I hit any key on my keyboard now, maybe you can hear me typing, uh, you can see it's getting logged out every time I type something. And then we could even get uh, more specific than that. Say if we want to listen for a specific key, uh, I could do key down dot uh, space. And if we jump back in here again, if I first focus that and now start typing, no uh, statements are being logged out to the console. Uh, but if I hit the space bar, it does get logged out. So we're listening, uh, listening for a specific key. Uh, so again, you're probably not going to want to listen for key presses on a button, but you could easily use that in a, a text field, for example. So I just wanted to give you a really quick example of how you can use those event bindings for more than just a simple click event. 
Uh, obviously, the gestures can come in quite useful uh, for mobile applications specifically with things like pinching and panning and things like that. Uh, but also the ability to listen to these uh, DOM events is also uh, very useful. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.